I'm here with uh, Kevin Noblock from, from Onbaric. Uh, Kevin, we wanted to talk just briefly about Ed Kraples, uh, your friend, the founder of uh, Onbaric, a tremendously uh, visionary human being, wonderful businessman, but also just a very nice man. He recently uh, passed away and, you know, he left all of us with a with a really kind of an empty feeling, I suppose, but also um, just happy to have had a chance to have known Ed. He was just a wonderful person. He was, he was indeed, Norman. He, uh, and, 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 his, and, and his death a, a few months ago was a terrible loss to, to Embarek and, and, and to, to obviously to his family and, and, and to the broader uh, clean energy industry. He, uh, uh, he, he was all those things that you just said. He was a, a very smart and capable businessman. He, he was a, a thought leader. Uh, he was uh, an entrepreneur. He, he had tremendous uh, charisma, uh, an optimism, and, and a, and a can-do, forward-leaning spirit that he brought. He brought to work every single day, and and maybe that came from you know he 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 was an immigrant to the states as as a young boy. He was born in the Netherlands. His parents uh, first moved to Puerto Rico, and then then over to the to, the, to our mainland, where he. Uh, uh, basically grew up in his formative years and went to school here um, all the way through to a PhD um, and really uh, uh, really uh, brought into the clean energy industry a a, a sense of, of vision and kind of hands-on uh, can-do spirit as I say he uh, he, he built in uh started about 15 16 years ago uh, co-developed a couple big complex projects in New York, New York and New Jersey. And as you know, then the transmission business is not for the faint of heart. Uh, <laughs> it's very complex from from dealing with the, uh, uh, you know, dealing with the regional transmission organizations and and uh, uh, getting interconnection rights, permitting, financing, uh, and all of that is, is 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 one big challenge. And and if you're a developer, uh, where well, you have to basically put your own companies uh, uh, development dollars ahead first. Uh, it's it's uh, it, it's it's a uh, high wire act, and Ed was very very good at it. He, uh, uh, you know, he, he he was a thought leader. He, uh, he for many years he was a, a oil and gas analyst, um, and and brought an analyst perspective to to the work. He he loved publishing in in, in industry journals. And, and op beds and and really planning the flag out front and challenging everybody. Yeah, you know, offshore wind is an example of that. Brand new, an opportunity to build a brand new domestic economic sector from scratch, but not a foregone conclusion. He, and he led the charge in saying, we have to think this through. We have to plan, in particular, the transmission end of it. And so he was out there as a thought leader, even as uh, he, he was leading us, the, the Embarrick team, in developing specific projects. To, to implement that that vision. The other thing I'd say is he he he's one of these leaders who had an eye for talent and uh, and built an extraordinary team. Uh, Embarek is not a large company, but it's a, it's a highly effective company because of the the, the breadth and depth of the, of the talent uh, that uh, that Ed had personally recruited, including me uh, when I left Department of Energy and was looking for. Uh, to break into the clean tech sector, the clean energy sector. And lastly, as you say, he was a very, very decent human being. It was it was Ed's Ed decided to make us an employee owned company and to to basically uh, uh, break up and, and, and share the, the uh, you know, the, the, the ownership uh, options uh, among everybody in the company. And he was a very generous thing to do, uh, uh, and uh, and I think maybe a wise thing to do because we all feel that that great sense of of uh, incentive and ownership. That's phenomenal. That really is interesting. I didn't realize you guys were an employee-owned company. That's that's really good to hear. We've got a lot of employee-owned companies, members of Blueprint 2025, but they're mostly engineering construction companies in the middle of the country, and uh, so. This is a that's a really nice uh, example. What sticks in your mind most about Ed and, and his life? Because um, you know I used to just be, 
you know, he, he'd come to our leadership forum events and he'd, he'd brighten up the room, right? He was just a, a good guy to talk to. I, I think his ability to see the future, his ability to see, uh, you know, well down the line what the obstacles are going to be uh, and to to articulate solutions in a way that, that address, you know, costs and and uh, uh, environmental impacts and 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 uh, all, you know all kinds of of uh, uh, solutions jobs uh, he he consistently uh, would come up with with uh, creative ideas for, for 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 solving solving things you know there are our Braden Point project in Massachusetts where the old coal-fired power plant was being decommissioned and one of the one of the the rare uh, electrical substations right on the ocean, ocean's edge, so that you didn't have to, you know, spend millions and millions of dollars running running a cable in inland. Um, uh, he was one of the very first people to, to recognize that as 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 a site uh, that that really could house a 1,200 megawatt HVDC converter station and a 400 megawatt uh, energy battery storage facility, and help. Massachusetts uh, deliver and Southern New England deliver on their ambitious offshore wind goals and and so proactively uh, working with the the owners of that site built that built that project out um, that's that's still under development but it, it it's a good example uh, yeah. that along with the the New York New Jersey Ocean Grid the Southern New England Ocean Grid um, and, and many other projects. It's really interesting. I mean, it's almost as if to be a, a great developer, you have to be an orchestra conductor. You have to know all the technology, but you have to be able to get everybody to play their instruments right at the right time. How, how was Ed able to do what he did, you know, bringing so many people together around such an extraordinary vision or even uh, a, a set of visions? I mean, that, that's one of the things that you could almost say uh, characterized Ed's career. You're absolutely right. Norman, he was so good at at that, and you know how was he able to do it? I perhaps on 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 the sheer strength of his his charisma and his personality and his energy. Uh, uh, you know, this is a man who who had a, a, a genetic uh, lung condition called alpha one. Right. Um, his his uh, younger brother died of it, I think, in his forties. Uh, so Ed lived his life with this this condition. A degenerative lung condition, uh, and and lived a full life. He raised uh, raised sons. They were hikers. They were skiers, uh, and it was only only I think late in his life where he he started to feel the deterioration, and that's when he he considered a lung transplant, which he he did undergo back in June. Um, uh, but you wouldn't know that uh, that that Ed Ed was wrestling with that either in terms of his physical energy. Or in terms of his, uh, you know, his his positive perspective that he brought to the to the to the office every single day, uh, it, remarkable. And when you're around a leader like like Ed, um, it, it's it's impossible not to not to be inspired by it and to, and to react to it, and and to want to really be effective on on behalf of of Ed's vision and the company. And uh, that's. That's exactly what attracted me to to join in Barrick when when Ed made the offer, and uh, and and I know that's the case for for almost every other person in, in the company. Just a uh, and and again uh, the the decency of him. It, you know, it's you you can be uh, kind and decent and still be hard edged and and driven as a as a business person. And and Ed was both of those things. And in a way that your respect for somebody rises when when there's that combination. You know, you, you you have your leaders who are are driven and and they're 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 tyrants and and, <laughs> and are rough rough on staff. They don't keep their best people because the best people have places to go. It's right. uh, and and there are people who are who are are kind kind hearted, but but you know ineffective as as business people uh, and as leaders. And they don't keep their the best people because they have places to go. Uh, the the Ed combination is one that that uh, I've certainly tried to. Uh, try to uh, portray over time, and um, uh, and been inspired by Ed. That's fantastic. Well, thanks for uh, 
giving us a chance to celebrate his life. Really wonderful. Well, you're very welcome. I, I thank you so much for asking me. And I, I'm, I'm, I know you knew Ed and, 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 and uh, admired and loved him, and as, as we all did. It's great. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. Look forward to seeing you soon. And stay safe, huh? Thank you, Norman. Same to you.